ESPN presents NCAA Basketball. From Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, it's the 15th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes in a Big Ten battle with the 4th ranked Illinois Fighting Illini. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Iowa versus Illinois, is brought to you by Honda. We invite you to test drive the Accord LXI four-door sedan at your local Honda dealership today. By the Principal Financial Group, financial products that give you an edge. By Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by Atra Plus, Gillette made it smoother. Mike Patrick and Larry Connolly with you from Illinois, where we've got 15th ranked Iowa against the number four fighting Illini. Illinois 25 and 4 this year. They are 16 and 0 at home, trying to go 17 and 0 this season here at Assembly Hall with a crowd of more than 16,000. Let's get the starting lineups for both ball clubs from public address announcer Jim Shepard. Good evening, basketball fans. I'm Jim Shepard, and welcome to the Assembly Hall, home of the Fighting Illini. Let's now meet the starting lineups for tonight's Big Ten Conference game between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the University of Illinois. For the Iowa Hawkeyes at forward, a 6'8 senior from Springfield, Illinois, number 25, Ed Horton. For the Illini at forward, a 6'6 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Nick Anderson. At forward for the Hawkeyes, a 6'5 freshman from Summit, Illinois, number 32, Ray Thompson. For the Illini, at forward, a 6'6 senior from Aurora, Illinois, number 33, Center for Iowa, a seven-foot junior from Bowbells, North Dakota, number 51, Les Jepson. For the Illini at center, a 6'7 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 45, Lowell Hamilton. At a guard for the Hawkeyes, a 6'6 senior from Flint, Michigan, number 23, Roy Marble. For the Illini at guard, a 6'6 junior from Carbondale, Illinois, number 35, Stephen Bardo. At guard for Iowa, a 6'1 freshman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, number 4, Brian Garner. And for the Illini at guard, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 30, Marcus Liberty. The head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes is Dr. Tom Davis. The Illini are coached by Lou Henson. We have Iowa and Illinois coming up for you. We'll be back with the tip-off in just a moment. We're at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, and Larry, for people who are, have not seen a lot of Iowa and Illinois, we'll see people pressing just a little tonight. Well, Mike, you're going to see two different types of presses, but this man right here, Kenny Battle, while he's the second leading scorer on this Fighting Illini club, he leads the team in steals, and he's really an important cog in that press that they've got. Tom Davis, on the other hand, throws a little bit different press at you. He'll go after the man with the ball out of bounds. So you're going to see two pressing clubs, and you're going to see a lot of people playing off that bench tonight. Illinois in the home whites with the orange and blue trim. Iowa in their dark road uniforms. Les Jepson will step into jump center against Kenny Battle at 6'6". Jepson the seven-footer. Great crowd tonight. Great crowd. Isn't it? Everybody on their feet for the start of this one. Controlled by Iowa. And immediately the Hawkeyes go straight to the hoop and get the first two and marble gets the opening bucket. Wasted a little time getting one in. That took about all of three seconds. This is Bardo. Missed by Anderson. Got his loose ball. Forced it up and missed. And here comes Brian Garner. Kendall Gill will be in reasonably shortly, we understand. And he will connect that. 
for the Illini backcourt. And we'll wait for that. B.J. Armstrong will be coming in for Garner for Iowa. Ball kicked out of bounds. They'll recycle the shot clock. Mike, it's the type of tempo you expect to see out of an Iowa-Illinois game. You're going to see a lot of running up and down the floor, quick transition, good defense, pretty good shooters, good athletes on both of these clubs. Thompson is fouled. He's been playing brilliantly the last couple of games. In the last two, 36 points and nine rebounds. But Thompson will pick up the offensive foul in this instance, his first, first on the team. A little bit different look now on Tom Davis's press. You can see right here they backed off. They're not guarding the man out of bounds. A little bit different look here. Of course, wherever he has gone, he has played that pressure defense. One, two, two zone right now by the Hawkeyes. Liberty, a big point man, six eight. Hamilton with a loose ball, then lost it to Jepson. I get three shots in a row now. Illinois has missed. Garner tried to get it up court to Eddie Horton, knocked out of bounds. Illinois trying to play a little bit of zone of their own right there. They're back in their man-to-man. -man. You can see Liberty out there on the point. Yes, he is 6'8", and yes, he does play that guard position out there. Jepson not drawing any attention when he's out there. This is Horton. And Ed Horton gets the bucket. It's 4 nothing Iowa. I was talking to Lou Henson today. He says, the guy absolutely scares me to death. He said he kills us every time we play with him. No wonder. Liberty for three. Excuse me. His foot was on the line. It's a two. Mike, it's a good start for him. He had been struggling a little while, particularly when Gill was out of the lineup, but he's really been playing well of late. Thompson with the goal. 6-2 to two, Iowa. Thompson has really come on strong and could help this ball club. They've got the three superstars. He would be the other link. I'm getting four guys who can average better than 10 points a game. Battle forced it up. The tip is good. I thought Gill might have gotten that one. I'm not sure, but I think he did. Maybe it rolled in. The cheer is for Kendall Gill, who is reported to the scorer's table. He'll be in in a moment. Thompson with a follow. And Thompson joins Horton with four points apiece. Ray Thompson ever ready on the spot. Can play either forward. All he lacked was experience, and he's gotten it in his freshman campaign. You know, Mike, it's hard to make an estimate about which team this type of tempo favors because both clubs like to go up and down the floor and like to get off quick shots. Bardo, Liberty offensive rebound. Liberty, a wealth of talent coming out of high school. Hey, it's a freshman show tonight. It's a Thompson Liberty show. Horton, triple team. Jepson, offensive rebound, a lot of contact and a foul. Garner will go out. B.J. Armstrong comes in for Iowa, and there is Kendall Gill. He has been out since the 22nd of January with a broken bone in his foot. He was the leader of a 17-0 team that was ranked number one. They are 8-4 without it. Horton jump hook. Well, that quieted the crowd. Ed Horton averaging 18 points and nearly 11 rebounds a game. It's 10-6, Iowa. Gill says he is at least 95%. Yeah, Mike, that's one of the things I was interested in seeing tonight, how these two guards are going to perform on their physical abilities. Gill back in the lineup. I'm sure we'll see Armstrong back in there fairly soon. Gill for three. Didn't get the roll. Follow won't go. Hamilton had his hands on it and then lost. Well, tell you, if Gill had made that shot, we wouldn't have been able to hear for the next 10 minutes. Would have lit it up. Bullard is in there. He's number 50 for Iowa. Loose ball. Horton keeps it. Armstrong, he's part of You've got to believe Gill's a little bit rusty. I mean, he's missed 12 basketball games. He's been out since January the 22nd. He needs to get his feet underneath of him. Handle the ball a little bit. Probably not in very good condition either. But he is a tremendous defensive player. He got in, in the face of the shot that time and forced it off. And here's a whistle and a foul inside. And it looks like it's Jepson over the back. Gill on that defensive series went right out on B.J. Armstrong. You want to know the reason why Lou Henson worries about Ed Horton? Watch him work inside on the 
position in the paint. Just got it. Wheel went right by Lowell Hamilton. And he just missed the shot. 15-52 to go. First half of play. Iowa leads Illinois 10-6. At midnight, back to the Pac-10, UCLA and Washington. Why don't you settle in for a nice long day with us on championship week? How about the, the field, field goal percentage? Percent. Oh, Illinois, 3 of 10. Iowa shooting very well at 5 of 10, 50%. The zone has been rather effective. You know, they kind of pack it back in. I think they don't have a lot of respect for the outside shooting of Illinois, particularly Battle and Anderson from out there. Better watch Kendall Gill. There's a great move to the hoop shot. Won't go, but the rebound goes to Battle, and he got it in. I'll tell you, that's one thing Battle can do. He can battle. He will go in and get it and stick it back. Averaging 16 points a game, he cuts the lead to two. Horton. And that's goal off the glass, and it's goaltending on Hamilton. Lou Henson told me this afternoon, he said, Ed Horton just absolutely destroys us. He says, I'm glad he's graduated. He's a monster inside. The lead is back to four. One thing Lou Henson would like to do tonight is get Kendall Gill back on track. That's the second shot he's missed. Armstrong pushes it up. Geo Mikey's one of those players that if his shooting's not there, he'll still play the rest of the game. There's a two. Moses into the game. The freshman out of Gardena, California. Increases the lead to six. Liberty on the run. Look at that handle. Tipped outside. And the foul will go against the lineup. Illinois coming right out with the pressure. And it's going to be Gill on BJ right in the corner. They just throw the ball in the middle of Horton and bring it up against the pressure. Good dish by Armstrong in the corner. Great pass. Penetrating kick. Marble drilled that one at 16-8. I was a little bit more pressure that time. They turned it up a notch, bent up a three-quarter court, and tried to get the turnover at midcourt. Marble on the point of the offense now. Crowd looking for something to cheer about. Gill needs a confidence builder right here. Good dish inside. Hamilton put it up on the right hand and got it. And Fred, he did that heavy traffic. I mean, there was nothing but black jerseys surrounding him in the paint. Look at Horton. Great drive to the baseline. Marble puts it up and in, and it's 18-10. Iowa playing very, very well, especially inside. DJ must have taught Horton how to pass, huh? <laughs> Moses dogging Bardo and drops back in the zone. Hamilton again, same spot. Knocked away this time, and Marble retrieves it. Bardo back the other way, but a foul on Moses. One thing that Tom Davis has not had this year is a bench that has given him a lot. Uh, you're taking a look at Moses there. Garner, Skinner, Moses, and looking Bill off the bench have been very inconsistent. Fred, take a look at the middle of this zone defense that Iowa has right here, Mike. You can see the dish to the inside. Once he turns and goes in, now there's the slap away, but they've been able to get the ball two times in a row in the paint in there. Iowa may be concentrating a little bit too much on the perimeter. Kendall Gill gets the hand as he will sit down after seeing his first action in a month and a half and into the ball game is Larry Smith, the junior from Alton, Illinois. You know, Mike, it's a fairly sizable lineup. Iowa's got in there right now. All across that line. Smith had it partially blocked. Thompson was the guy who got a piece of it. Horton oh. behind the back. Thompson. Ed Horton showing you something at midcourt. He says, forget the paint, forget it underneath. Let me show you what I can do out top. 6'8", 230, behind the back dribble, and then the dish. Mike, this is a great start for Iowa. They took the crowd right out of the game early. Good penetration, but the shot won't go, and the rebound goes to Matt Bullard. Bullard, a pretty decent ball handler for a big guy. Now, this is the same Iowa team that's been beaten twice in a row. Bullard with a runner. Bardo, careless pass, got it back. That lineup they've got in there right now, they've got James Moses right there. You can see him at the top, Ray Thompson. Great size, great arm stretch there. Very difficult to make passes around those guys in this type of zone. Hamilton again in the middle, goes to the baseline. And we've got the foul on Bullard. 
You know, oftentimes when you run this kind of zone and you pack it back in, what you're trying to do is deny the pass to the inside. Mm -hmm. They're not having any success denying the pass. The ball's coming in there very easily. Hamilton's had a couple of easy chances. He got one basket out of three. And he's going to the line for some free throws now. It's almost as if they want to show you the defense to try to discourage you from bringing the ball in there, but once you get in there, you can do almost anything you want with Just it. Just about. I think both of these teams, Larry, are teams that could go a long way in the NCAA tournament. They seem to have all the weapons. I was up here in December, and I, uh, I did the Illinois-Florida game, and I didn't, at that time, I don't think from that point until today I've ever seen a team totally devastated the way Florida was that night against Illinois. They absolutely tore them out of the frame, and I thought at that time that that was the best team that I had seen. And, of course, Gill went out with that injury, and they lost four games while he was gone. He was such an important part of this ball club, offensively and defensively. Second free throw won't go, and Horton wants some help. Better get rid of it. He says, I'll bring it up. You guys go on down. Remember the last time he went behind the back. And he'll talk about that for several weeks. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ready to nickname him Magic yet. <laughs> 20 to 11. Almost a steal. And a backcourt violation. We've got a timeout with 11.54 to go in the half. The lead is nine. You're looking at a man that is 6'8", weighs 230 pounds, averages 18 points and 10 rebounds. But he's going to show you something else. He can show you he can pass the basketball. Watch it again. Watch him bring the ball up the court, take it, put it right behind his back, leave Smith hanging at midcourt, a little dish to the right side, another pass. Bounce it, go in. I'm going to tell you something. That is great agility for a guy who is 230 pounds. Ed Horton taking a well-deserved rest. And Iowa with a little more than 11 minutes to go in the first half, has a nine-point lead on homestanding Illinois, a team that is undefeated here at Assembly Hall this year. You think they're interested in this game at Indiana? You know what's interesting about this series? The last seven games, Iowa has won six of the last seven and two of the last three here in Champaign. They got the feed inside that time, and Nick Anderson able to score for Illinois and cut the lead to seven. Out of bounds. And Lou Henson up to applaud his team as Garner couldn't stay in bounds with it. Illinois not having any problems with the entrance pass inside. Look at Anderson grab it and just wheel and deal. You know, it's really interesting because Iowa looks like they're really packing that zone defense in there, and it looks like you cannot get a pass in there, but Illinois is getting a lot of very easy passes into that zone. They have done it consistently. Armstrong is back in the game. Looking Bill was on for a moment, and he checks back out. Boy, Jepson guarding the inbounds pass. That's a lot to throw over or around. It's like Mount McKinley standing there. Thompson knocked it out of bounds. It's a great shot right here. It'll give you some idea of what Bardo has to look at in trying to, out to uh, inbound the pass. Look at those arms. Look how big he is. His hands standing flat-footed appear to go up around nine feet. Smith can't get inside. Bardo set for three. Illinois really having difficulty from that three-point range tonight. You know, I don't know why they're attempting that. If they're having so much success taking the ball inside against that zone defense, why don't they continue to do that? And Kendall Gill is their best outside shot. He is on the bench right now. Horton handles that basketball like it's an apple. Sixteen on the shot clock. Marble will fire. Yeah. Horton got his hands on it. Knocked out of bounds. It's out to Iowa. Oh, they're not having any difficulty getting good shots either. They're getting plenty of them on the perimeter. Look at Marble. Oh, good athletic move. Beautiful turnaround jumper, and it's 22-13. Eight for Roy Marble, the number one scorer of all time in Iowa history. And there have been some players come through Iowa. They sure play. have. Smith on the run. Nice pass. Hamilton. Pretty feed from Smith, and Hamilton got the jam. Smith leads his club in assists. Armstrong, great control not to turn it over there against the pressure. Illinois, a little sloughing man-to-man. -man. Good help off the ball. 
Not much pressure on the ball, though. They don't come out and really put it on. They're working on that guy. Marble again. Turn around jumper. Iowa hitting on all cylinders, leading by nine again. And to end, there's the block. The goaltend on Thompson. Bardo will get the basket. Watch the move down the middle. Bardo coming right across the middle. Look at this play. Who got up and got it? Ray Thompson knocked it back. It's a goaltending call. Illinois gets the basket. Iowa really playing well, Mike. Up to this point, they've got that seven-point lead, and you're in Champagne, and I mean, you've got a jammed house in here. Orange crushing all. They have played brilliantly so far. Bullard is back in there in the middle. Armstrong getting some contact as he tried to get the ball on court, had to knock it out. Moses back in for the Hawkeyes. Tom Davis, 75 and 23 in three years. It's the best stretch Iowa basketball has ever had. Trying to get it to Moses. Liberty knocked it out of bounds. Good job by Liberty. It's Tom Davis. Outstanding coaching career. In a few places, Lafayette, Boston College, Stanford. Horton forced that one up. It was short. Anderson had it. Then knocked out of bounds out to Illinois. It went off of Bullard. Iowa coming after that patented press. Somebody's wide open underneath. Bardo. Moses had a chance to pause. Small, small, small had a chance to pause and put it in. Somebody went to sleep on the press. You know, all the times, Mike, when you do that, you bring everybody up. And if you're not aware of what's going on behind you, some guy can slip down the backside and small did. Illinois a little tougher on defense now. They've extended that defense. A little bit more pressure on the ball. A little more denying of the passing lane. They have turned it up a notch, haven't they? Thompson baseline. Offensive foul. You know what this is? This may be lack of experience. You get in a situation, the freshman comes right inside. He really forced that, Mike, and didn't need to. He could have stopped, pulled up, and taken that jumper without trying to come to that baseline and powering it up. There's the turnover story. Thompson has two fouls, both offensive fouls called at the baseline. 24-19, Illinois back with the five and with the ball. Eight and a half minutes to go. Now they're within three as Kenny Battle buried that one. Armstrong back the other way. Great pass ahead to Marble. He lost it. And a jump ball situation. Ball goes to Illinois. What a pass by Armstrong, even if it didn't work. Mike, he gets down the floor so quickly, and he's always got his head up looking. And that's the most important part of playing basketball when you're a point guard or a guy who handles the ball. Always look for your teammates, and if you're on the other end, be sure you're looking because you'll get it if you're not careful. Wade Looking Bill is into the ball game. He's number 34 for the Hawkeyes. And as you can see, in the last 220, Illinois has come back. They've made it a three-point game. Iowa, back in it. Iowa's still back in that 1-2-2 two, two zone defense. Oh, Illinois continues to look in the middle of it. Battle will try it again from outside. Good offensive rebound, Marcus Liberty. Yes! And a foul! Watch the battle miss and the Liberty rebound. He really worked to go get that one, Mike, and he turned and went straight back with it. One dribble, up, the charge, but count the basket. Marcus Liberty. 7.57 to go first half. We're down to a one-point game. Illinois has hit five of its last six field goals to cut down into a big Iowa lead. It's only one point right now. 24-23, and it's been an impressive little run here for the Illini. Mike, you're looking at Marcus Liberty right there. He and Bardo and Smith the other night against Indiana were a combined four of 25 from the perimeter. So Illinois really struggling from the outside, and again tonight, not really shooting very well from out there, but they're having a lot of success taking the ball to the inside. And I think that's where their offense really lies. Kendall Gill, of course, their best outside shooter. He has played a couple of minutes in his first game back since 
near the end of January. Had two shots, missed them both. Armstrong, nice penetration. Kicks it off to Moses. Rejected. Got it back. And once again, the rebound to Nick Anderson. Well, Anderson went right, right by Ed Horton for that rebound. Oh, Smith, Smith right there. But the foul on Smith. His first. You talk about a tough call. That's a tough call. Larry Smith made an excellent move right down the lane. Lou Henson upset with the call. And he should be because they got a dunk out of it that won't count. Crowd didn't like it at all. Here comes Horton by Hamilton. Great steal by Nick Anderson. Couldn't get the rebound, so he waited until they came down and swiped it. Great hands. Liberty. Yes. Boy, the kid can do a lot of things. And he's getting better with each game, Mike. Illinois is taking the lead, 25-24. And a here's foul. a foul on Liberty, a little over-aggressive on defense. Marcus picks up his second. Well, you can understand why, because when Roy Marble gets in that position down there and they get him the basketball, you can almost put it in the bank. Kendall Gill will come in for Illinois. Coaching staff's done a good thing. He was ready to play a game ago. They held him out. They're obviously not rushing him back into the lineup. They want to make sure that he's ready for the NCAA when it uh, becomes very, very important for him to be ready. Well, you know, he was averaging 20 points a game in Big Ten games, was leading scorer for the Fighting Illini, and was also leading the uh, Big Ten in steals. With he and Bardo in the backcourt, I mean, they can put on some withering defense. Bullard, 15-footer, under pressure, and he got it. Tell you what, he had battle right in his face, too, when he let it go. I went right back with that pressure. Hawkeyes by one, six and a half minutes to go. You almost get the feeling I was a little reluctant to put that pressure on Illinois because of the quickness they got at that guard position. Exactly. it back in. Look at that. Everybody playing in the paint. Hamilton got a follow inside off of Battle's miss, and he's fouled on the way up. Iowa players talking among themselves about who blocked out and who didn't. Nobody's going to win that argument. <laughs> They're all three going to take the blame. Ed Horton upset. I think, it, I think if he came to me and said, you got to do your job, I'd do it. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if he's in the argument, I'd let him win. Ed, you're absolutely right, and I'll cover, pal. Hamilton, five points tonight. He's hit one out of two from the free throw line. Only a 58% shooter on the season. He's the worst of the starters in that department. Illinois goes back on top, 27-26. Hill against Armstrong. That's a great matchup on both ends. Boy, it sure is. Horton down the lane. That's probably a charge, and it is. Horton got a late start and didn't stop. Well, when you get it in motion, it's kind of tough to slow it down. You're carrying <laughs> 230 pounds. That a body in motion tends to remain in motion. Look at Anderson. Great defensive position. Did you see him move that body right in there? He knew he had a truck coming at him, but he went ahead and took it anyway. And Anderson will get a one and one out of the situation. You know, Mike, this is an Iowa basketball team that has lost eight games this year, and they have got a lot of talent on this club. They've got three great seniors, Marble, Armstrong, and Horton. And they really fill in admirably, I think, with Thompson as a freshman and two or three other guys, and Victor Ballard. But this is a club that I think is going to be something to contend with when they get to NCAA tournament time. I do too, Larry. They need, I think, a little more help off their bench. And they may be getting it near the end of the year. It would have been a lane violation, but the basket was good anyway. And Illinois now up by three. Armstrong against the pressure. This is Moses. Picked up his dribble, and Armstrong, very smart, came right to him to get the ball. Those the last five minutes, Illinois seems to have turned that defense up just a little bit. A little bit more pressure. Now, good dish inside the Lard to Marble. Whoa. Boy, that was a pretty pass. Marble now with a dozen in the first half. Anderson. 
that way to the Gill, very politely, ducks under Bardo in case he wanted to shoot. Gill's such a nice kid, you can't help but root for him. Long range, banked it home! His first two points since January 22nd. Armstrong to tie it and does with a three. Is that poetic justice? The two guys have been injured, come back and score back-to-back -back baskets. I'm sure Kendall Gill would look at Armstrong and say, hey, man, you missed one game. I've been out for a month and a half. Don't upstage me. Tied at 31, but an excellent ball game. Hamilton, nice, patient shot, wouldn't go for it, but it's tipped out to Illinois. Again, as you pointed out before, they had no trouble getting the ball to Hamilton right in the middle of that packed-in zone. Right, they really have it. Now, watch Gill penetrate, stop. Look at the bounce pass. Nobody in there. Hamilton's got it. He's got an easy shot, and it just will not stay down. The large off his hand. It'll go back to the fighting Illini. Hamilton bounced it off a foot inside and lost it. Pointing to Armstrong. Goes by Gill. Banked it up. Won't go for it. And the rebound to Anderson. Here's Gill the other way. Hamilton. Contact. No whistle. Jepson with a rebound. Threw an elbow. No whistle. Armstrong back the other way. More contact and a travel. It's getting a little loose out there. Yeah, I'd say so. You know what happened that time? Nick Anderson was standing there getting ready to take a charge. B.J. Armstrong lost the handle on the ball, hit him right in the nose. They'll need pads in a minute. 4.17 to go in the half. Tied at 31. And Anderson is fouled on the way up. You know, Mike, this is the type of basketball game when you've got two great teams like this that like to go up and down the floor. What ends up happening is the club that is in the best physical condition usually ends up winning this game. They had an 86-82 game over at Iowa last month, and I want to tell you, they got up and down the floor, and I think the club that's going to be in the best condition comes out here and plays as the team is going to win this game. Anderson at the line. Mike Patrick and Larry Conley with you from Urbana-Champaign, Illinois. First free throw is good, and Illinois is back on top, 32-31. It was Iowa early, but the Illini has fought back to get even. Anderson, five points, four rebounds so far. Got the second free throw. Averages 17.4 points, seven and a half rebounds a game. He is their answer to Ed Horton. And a pretty good answer at that. Jepson back in the ball game. Look how far he is away from the hoop. Well, no, in a man-to-man -man defense, they're just switching players. Liberty and Anderson don't do anything but just exchange on the away from the ball. Marble loves the turnaround. Buries another. We're tied at 33. Marble already has 14 points. Gill, good ball handler. Marble, by the way, trying to become the first Iowa player in 12 years to average 20 points a game. Kendall Gill for three. He's back. Welcome home. Look out for Illinois in the tournament, folks. Thompson, that won't count. There's a foul before the shot. Kendall Gill was the missing piece. This team was 17-0 and cooking until he got hurt. He was averaging 15 points a game, and this is why they got him. They needed that outside threat. They've got it. The trifecta is back. 3.18 to go, first half. Kendall Gill's three-pointer has put Illinois up by three. Illinois, 36, Iowa, 33 with 3.18 to go in the first half of play. Here are the Big Ten standings and why this game means so much, especially to Illinois. They would close within a game of Indiana, and they have Michigan left on the schedule Saturday. Indiana, of course, can wrap it up all for themselves if they can beat Wisconsin tomorrow night or Iowa Saturday. Here's the steal. Anderson on the run to Gill. Nice pull up and the blocking foul called against Iowa. Look at Kendall Gill. All you teams in the NCAA tournament, watch out. Look at Kendall Gill. Yes. He's back. 
And I think that was a great call by the official. You could see on the replay that B.J. Armstrong trying to draw the charge, but moved in ever so slightly after Gill was already in the air, and you can't do that. Gill has eight points in limited action, and the Illinois lead has grown to six. Armstrong with Gill on him. They try to trap him, can't do it. Pull it. Well, Illinois has been a real run here in the last 10 minutes. And Marble and Horton haven't done much. Armstrong for three. Horton got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. How about this? Illinois, 11 points off of turnovers, and Iowa yet to convert a single point off of any turnovers they've got from Illinois. But Illinois has only turned it over three times. Illinois has really stepped up the tempo, and Nick has stolen. Has eight. Battle lost it. Here comes Armstrong. Boy, what a swing that would have been. Marble. Thompson offensive rebound. And, oh, wouldn't go for it. Anderson clears for Illinois. Got to live on that basket down there for Iowa. Bardo. That's a three. And all at once, Illinois is up by 11. Tom Davis tries to cut the momentum. He calls a timeout with 2.16 to go in the half. Illinois has just shown everybody who's watching this game what they are capable of offensively and defensively. And also, Mike, you've got to say this about Iowa. They've had some tough luck on their shots. They've had a couple of them roll around the rim and come off. But Illinois has been able to capitalize and get the ball to the other end and get some baskets off of it. This Illinois team is getting put back together. When Kendall Gill came back in that lineup, it was almost as if somebody flipped the switch. The lights went on, and everybody said, we're back, and we're ready to go. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders has all the tournament scores and highlights, a lot of stuff going on, and then we'll be back here to Champaign for Larry's first half analysis. Mike, you know, I was standing over there, and they're talking, and Tom Davis has got him gathered around discussing what he's going to do when he comes out of that timeout. They've been very reluctant tonight to really turn the pressure up on this Illinois team. I think oftentimes when you scout a club, particularly a club that's in your own league that you play it a lot, many, many times, you have a tendency to look and make an evaluation as to whether or not you can press them. I don't think Iowa feels like they can press Illinois for a lot of reasons. One is they've got very quick guards. Two, they're good ball handlers. And three, they get over that press, that first wave, very quickly. There's an old adage in basketball. Teams that press don't like to be pressed. Uh -huh. Okay? Both of these clubs press well, but they know each other so very well. I think it's very difficult to play a 94-foot game when you know the personnel of the other team that well. Take a look at that last basket, and Bardo pulls up for the three-pointer. Tell you what, you talk about presses all you want. You get a guy that can do that all night long, that's all you need. And Illinois in the last minute and a half has been on a roll. Armstrong up to Pullard. Iowa needs to get the ball back to Marble and Horton. There's Thompson cutting down the lane, had it blocked by Anderson, but a foul. You know, Thompson went right by Hamilton there. Hamilton had his back to him. He caught the ball, went in and laid up. Watch this. You never turn your back on the ball. Now watch Hamilton. Right there, see him? He's got his back to it, never saw him. Anderson's trying to get over to recover to try to get to the block, but Hamilton never saw the pass to the inside. Little lesson right there if you're playing defense. Never take your eye off of that ball. Almost looked like he set a screen for it. I know. Thompson, 74% free throw shooter. Missed them both. Kendall Gale, it's a three on two. Tough pass, and Anderson couldn't hold it. You know what, there? That's laying off since January 22nd. Any other time, he lobs the ball. The pass was just yep. too direct. He's going to lay it up there for Anderson to catch it, Jane. Illinois leads by 11 or under two minutes, first half. Armstrong with that catch, quick move to the baseline. May have had that one partially blocked. And Kendall Gill, who blocked it, is ahead of the pack. The lead's back to 11. Horton wants the ball and gets it. But he walked. And I think Iowa is really shaken at this point. Everything's going the fighting Illini way right now. Iowa turns the ball over. Illinois with an opportunity to build it up to 13. Bardo and 
Gill in the backcourt. Anderson, Battle, and Hamilton up front. These are the five guys that will carry them whatever their tournament chances are. These are the five they'll ride with. Anderson for three. Not quite as long as the one he hit Sunday, but it's long enough for three, and it's 49-33. But it all counts the same. Thompson to Marble. Had to change his shot, he's fouled. Boy, this crowd wants everything. Mike, as my youngest son would say, this is totally awesome. <laughs> Watch it again. Post up on the inside. Marble does a good job of this. Thompson looks, makes a good lob pass right over Bardo. Good backside help by Hamilton, but it's too late. Good turn and roll by Marble. Tom Davis goes to his bench and gets Les Jepsen back into the ballgame. Illinois has scored the last 16 points. We were tied at 33. Now it's 49-33 with 45 seconds to go. You know, Mike, that's what they do to you, though. They hit you with those waves, and all of a sudden, it'll be a tidal wave that'll hit you. They'll get you with about 14 or 15, and you'll look up, and they'll say, what happened? Marble finally breaks the string. It's 49-34. Marble's had a brilliant first half. But it hasn't been enough. They're still down by 14. Moses on the press against Bardo. Iowa backs off of that press now, goes back to that zone. They can hold the ball and take the last shot of the first half. The shot clock is dark. The way things have gone, you wouldn't want to bet it won't go in, would you? I wouldn't bet. It's the game clock on your screen. Jepson knocks it away. Saved by Illinois. Nice pass into Anderson. Great play by Battle. Anderson from downtown. Got it back. He'll follow his own. 51-35. Half-court shot. Almost close enough for Horton, but not quite. A burst by Illinois. Has them on top of Iowa. 51-35. Go back to our studio at John Saunders. We're back at Assembly Hall in Urbana-Champaign, Illinois. A crowd of 16,100 really enjoying themselves. And this is the Fighting Illini Wheelchair Basketball Champions. They got their rings recently right there being passed out to them. And they won the championship last March in Kansas City. And they got a tremendous ovation when they were introduced here at halftime. Mike, I think that's just terrific. I really do. Let's take a look at the scoring for Iowa here at the half. Marble with 16. He is the guy who's really done the damage. Ed Horton has six, but he got all of those early, and no one else with more than six points for Iowa. For Illinois, Anderson with 13. Kendall Gill, his first game back since January 22nd, off the bench with 10. No one for either team really in foul trouble. You know what's impressive about Illinois' first half? Yeah, they're walking away right now with a 16-point lead, but when they got down, they never panicked. That's right. They got down and they fought back and they let Gill get into that lineup. And when he came in, it was just like everybody just picked up and said, hey, just like before January 22nd. When they were undefeated, 17-0, number one in the country. He's going to start the second half. You know, Mike, I'm real surprised he's playing as much as he is as long as he's laid off. Seems to be doing just fine. Had a broken bone in his foot. Gardner starts the second half at the point for Iowa. Illinois in a 2-3 zone. Horton got it inside. Kicks it back out. Thompson. Nice basket by Thompson, the little runner. Nice pass by Brian Gardner to get it to him in the middle. 51-37. It's a long way back for the Hawkeyes, especially here in Assembly Hall. The only undefeated team at home this year in the Big Ten is Illinois. Hamilton. Nice dish off. Basket will not count by Anderson, but he is fouled by Garner. But Mike, did you notice again, Illinois got the ball inside yeah. the Lowell Hamilton right in the teeth of that zone defense, and he got a good shot off. Now watch him go inside. Hamilton calls for the ball. They get it in there. Nobody there to contest the pass. He goes up. There's the block. Good block by Jepson inside. Jepson from behind. Anderson has hit all five free throws. Seven rebounds. Let's go, get up, get up, get up. 
Keep your hands two up. key players. Kenny Battle and Lowell Hamilton. And they got plenty of guys stepping into play. Don't they ever. 53-37. Everybody knows about the three Iowa's losing. Gardner, nice job to avoid the trap. Got it to Jepson. Yeah, Tom Davis really inherited his superstar players, and now he's going to have to replace them with his own recruiting. Thompson. Power inside player. Jepson offensive rebound. He can't get the bucket, but he's fouled by battle. Two consecutive trips now. Illinois tried to take the ball inside against Iowa's zone. That time Illinois went in there and set up a zone of their own after they opened up man to man, and Iowa got the ball back inside and pounded the offensive glass. Nice to have a guy like Horton and Jepson around, isn't it? In one of my favorite places, Bow Bells, North Dakota. You, vac right you vacation there? Of course. Well, does it, everybody? <laughs> He'll get another. Tom Davis really upset about something. I'm not sure what. He's all over the official on the side over there. I'm not sure what it's about. I think he felt like he had a lane, lane violation. Jepson hits another one. Come on, Illinois is so tough to press. You know, they throw Anderson down there, they've got Bill, they've got Bardo, and it's very, very tough to try to come after those guys. Oh, they all run the court so well. Now we're packing that zone back in. Let's see if Hamilton calls for the ball again. Here it is. And he had a shot. He could have turned around and taken it. Didn't even look at the hoop. Kicked it back outside. Shot clock is at 15. This is battle. Shot clock at 9 now. Ball knocked away. Marble can't save it. See those quick hands out there. He made that one quick, took two quick steps. Got to the ball and just had a little flick of his wrist. And the ball flew 40 feet. Now Illinois has to be aware there's only 7 seconds on the shot clock. And it doesn't look like they are. Tipped away in the steal. I don't think they got a, would have had a shot anyway. Marble all the way. It won't go, but he's fouled. They really went to sleep on the last play, and it wasn't because the Illinois bench wasn't telling them. Everybody on the bench was up pointing at the clock and saying, hurry, but they lost track of him. Not only the bench, but the crowd. Let's watch Roy Marble again. Good steal inside. Takes it in. Good power. Takes the shot. Just couldn't finish the play. You've got to continue it on through and get the basket. Foul is on Bardo. Bullard is back in. Jepson will sit down. And Marble goes to the line. Well, Mike, you always like to see guys complete a play. When they get fouled, take the shot, take the blow, and go ahead and make the basket. Complete your play. Marble with 17 points. First Iowa player ever over 2,000 points. Would have had another lane violation, but the bucket was good. 53 40. We've just crossed over 18 minutes. Iowa again trying to pack that zone back down inside. Hamilton calling. Anderson will take it. Anderson for three, and he buried it. 56 40. Anderson has 18 for Illinois. He's above his average for the year. That's superb game. Good ball moving by Iowa. They're going to be a little too patient. They're, they're getting some good shots, some good openings. They're going to have to take some. When you're down 16, you can't be uh, too choosy about what you got. That's right. Great feed from Marble to Horton. 56-42. Wide open, passed on the three, so did Bardo. So did Anderson. But he'll get a six-footer. Well, Mike, they just surround you with such good athletes out there. You put Bardo on that point, Gill and Anderson on those wings. It is so very tough to defend them. And when you come out, they're so quick they can blow right by you or kick the ball inside That's to right. Hamilton. Anderson has 20. He also kicked that last pass. They recycled the shot clock. Armstrong is in there in place of Garner. Let me tell you what makes that play. He shoots the three the last time, forces the defense out on him, then he goes by him. Exactly. Back to live action. They get the bucket inside. It's 
And here's a foul on Marble. Iowa trying to increase its defensive pressure. Tough to do. When you've got all the players out there that look like they're all 6'6", and they all weigh 210, and they all run like deer, awfully hard to stop that count. Kendall Gill trying to penetrate, kicks it back off. It's a very smart player. Hamilton trying to show his range. You know what he said? I've had enough of it in the paint. Let me show you what I can do on the baseline. You don't get triple teamed out there. 60-44, here's the steal. Four on two, Gill in the middle. Hamilton. That's the way you fill the lane on the break. This might get ugly. Armstrong. Tip won't go. Halfway down, came back out. Here they come again. Gill. Anderson couldn't get it to go. Hamilton. Here's Armstrong. Marble. What a move. Oh, jeez. Oh, what a great move. Ahead of the pack is Hamilton. Showtime. 64-46. Mike, you just cannot go to sleep on this Illinois team. If you get a basket, you better get back in transition and defense quickly. I think one thing they're trying to do, Larry, pound it inside so hard, nobody went back. And he's got a foul away from the ball. Bardo called for the person. 15-16 to go in the ball game. Illinois continuing to increase its lead. They're up by 18. Talk about the extra added dimension that Kendall Gill gives us Illinois club. Here's one of them right here. Reaches in, steals the ball. Now watch him go to the other end and deliver the ball to Lowell Hamilton. Kisses it right off the glass. Kendall Gill with an excellent play. And Hamilton filling the lane. But how about the other end? Let's talk about good guards. Here's a good one. Watch Armstrong. Little Adrian Dantley move right there. About three and a half steps, but count it anyway. Here's what Marble has done tonight. 20 points, three rebounds. Paul Hamilton enjoying a breather on the bench. 13 and three, most of them from inside. And one of the Illinois seniors playing his final home game. Oh, great move by Moses. Oh, what a block by Battle. Moses had it stuffed. Marble with the bottle. Can't get it. And Illinois will come out with another rebound to Anderson. It was Anderson that got that block in there. Yeah. Smith is now in there. Number 23 to run the clock. My guy, this another strength that Illinois has is Gill just misses from the outside. Anderson right back on it. Anderson gets the follow and he's fouled. Nick Anderson with 22 points tonight. Anderson, one of the better rebounders for his size of anybody in the country. 6'5". Watch him turn and get in there on Moses. Good, strong power move. Now that is completing the play. You get fouled, you go to the line. I was talking about the strength this Illinois club has. How about reaching down and getting Urban Small, Larry Smith, and Marcus Liberty yeah. off the bench? There's a foul away from the ball. It's going to be small for holding. On the press. Anderson now 23 points, 10 rebounds on the night. Non-shooting foul. Iowa will inbound. They are down by 21. You'd seen the way Iowa played early in the ballgame. You couldn't believe they'd be down 21 points. Illinois extending that defense now. They're coming out real tough man-to-man. -to -man. On a drive, and he and Small going after each other. Small's got a lot of courage. He better pick another opponent, though. Watch it down inside. Small guarding Horton right here. Oh, but, oh. Turn into Kenny on the head. Well, that's why Horton swung back. Unintentional on Small's part, of course. Now Lowell Hamilton's got him. He said, what am I doing here? Now Horton gets the ball, turns to the bucket. Offensive rebound, Moses, and he's flattened by Anderson. Did a good officiating job tonight. They don't want to let this one get away from him. Getting a little rough 
safe and rugged out there underneath. Kenny Battle will check back into the game, and Liberty will come out. Moses with his first trip to the free throw line. Larry, when you talk about Illinois, the one thing they obviously lack is the 6'10", uh, 6'11", center, but they seem to play around that deficiency very well. Well, you can compensate for size if you've got a lot of quickness and athletic ability, and that's the one thing this club does have. When I talk about them going down to eight players on the bench, and they all they all look like they're six six to six seven, and about two ten, but they all run well, they all shoot well, and they all rebound and jump well. They really listen to the Cardinal teams that Denny Crum has had in the past, and he's done pretty well in the eighties. Baseline shot by Anderson, the lead back to twenty one. Marble being held inside and. Clean this baby up quick. They're not going to let it get out of hand. Good job of officiating. I agree. Marvelous Smith going at it a little bit here. Smith's going to get the going to get the foul, and Marvel's going to walk to the line and shoot the free throws. Marble upset on the last sequence. Uh, he was hit in the place you don't want to be hit. And was not too happy about it. And was asking for a foul on that sequence. Finally got it on this one. Got it in the shoulder, man. Yeah. I knew as the analyst you'd come up with that. Battle. Oh, what a move. What a Gee, great pass. pass. They are putting on a show. 71-49. This is Moses. Bullard, who can shoot the outside shot. Marble, three steps. Iowa looks a little flustered, and why not? Illinois is really doing everything right. You know what's the most amazing thing so far in the second half? We've got 13.51 still to play. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa has never lost three straight games under Tom Davis. This could be it. Armstrong. Good steal. Good pressure by Iowa. I think this is what they've got to do to get back in this basketball game. They've got to get some turnovers against this Illinois offense. 71-51. Bad pass here, but Anderson runs it down. He's fouled. Moses got him from behind, and a good foul by Moses saved the sure layup. Anderson with a good athletic move to run that ball down. I thought the ball was going to roll right into the hands of Ed Horton. He backed off. Anderson caught it up. This is the consensus all Big Ten team. Coaches and writers pick the same five guys. Anderson and Horton, Rice, Edwards, and Burson. And Jay Burson, uh, of course, Horton is from uh, Illinois, not Iowa, or Iowa, not Illinois, as we had it up on the screen. You have to feel for Jay Burson with that halo. You have to feel for Ohio State, the way they have faltered down the stretch without their leader. I, I'm going to say this in a very complimentary way, but he might be the most unusual college player I have seen in the last 10 years. I think so, too. I've never seen a guy that size who can score the way he does. If they'd let him, I think he'd play with that halo. <laughs> Armstrong, good nice runner in the lane. 73-53. Battle back the other way. The basket will not count. Mike, that's what I'm talking about. You've got to get back on defense against this Illinois club. If you don't, they're going to destroy it. Battle on the run out. Who's guarding him? B.J. Armstrong. Look at this push behind the back. There's the shove right there. Hand checking right at the mid, right at the free throw line. Foul before the shot. So they just inbound. Kendall Gill had it stuck. And he and Jepson collide. The foul will be on Kendall Gill. When Jepson falls down, it's a long way to the floor. And it takes a long time for him to get yeah. there. Kendall Gill trying to get possession right here on the inside. He got it against Armstrong. Jepson with a good block, and then Gill went right over his back. I know that sometimes that's just called a foul of frustration. You've missed an easy shot and you want the ball back just because yeah. you feel like, gosh, I've missed that one. I want to try it again. Jepson has hit one out of two from the free throw line tonight. Way short on that one. Great offensive rebound. Horton, it's blocked. What a foul. 
Hey, the line are uh, racking up some fouls in this second yeah. half. I think they're taking their nickname literally. <laughs> that will be three on Anderson. And Lou Henson will go to his bench. We got Larry Smith back in the ballgame when he can. And Kendall Gill will come out. I, these Illinois fans really appreciate the contribution of Kendall Gill. They saw their team stumble some when he went out. Horton has not been much of a factor since the opening two or three minutes of this ballgame. Yeah, they really have taken him out of it. I think yeah. it's probably because they take a look at the Illinois bench right there. I think it's simply because the game changed on him a little bit. They started concentrating on him defensively, and he wasn't able to get the ball as often as he did in that first five minutes. Made the second free throw. He has 11. We have 13-15 to go from Illinois, and the Illini holding a 19-point lead. Mike Patrick and Larry Conley with them. Glad you could join us tonight on ESPN. Illinois trying to make it 17-0 at home. Back Lombardo against the pressure. This is Smith. Hamilton, he can hit from there. Mike, is there something they can't do well? Haven't seen it yet. Nice drive by Thompson. Couldn't hit the shot. Liberty. Smith. Nice dip. Oh, what a pass. ESP. Hamilton has 17. The lead has grown to 23. Horton. Horton couldn't get it. Here comes Smith. And then Horton really frustrated. Leaves Bardo alone and he carries the three. 80 to 54. Are you kidding? not playing chopped liver. They are playing the number 15 team in the country that has three superstars and they are eating them up for lunch. An awesome display. Great talent on this club. They've got depth. They've got quickness. They're smart. They play very intelligently. They know what to take advantage of whatever the defense gives them. This is a good, good basketball team. Gray, Larry, when they're healthy, this may be the best team in the country. Look at Horton, down the middle. Good roll. Horton trying to take everything on his own, lost the ball out of bounds. 11.41 to go. Illinois already with 82 points. They're up by 26. As good as Illinois has been in the last couple of years, they have had their problems in the NCAA. That was a last second miss, and Austin P upset them two years ago in the opening round. Then last year, Lou Henson watched in disbelief as Villanova came from 10 down in the last minute to knock Illinois out of the tournament in the second round. And of course, Larry, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth regardless of how great your regular season has been when you don't get farther than that in the tournament. Mike, I've seen Lou Henson's basketball teams play for a lot of years at Illinois and also when he was at Hardin-Simmons. I'm going to tell you something. This is the best basketball team he's ever had. Yep. I think it's the deepest and the most talented. Small will be called for a personal underneath on the reach-in as they inbound the ball. As a college coach once told me, though, when you get to the NCAA, you got to have a few four-leaf clovers in your pocket, you too. too. It does help. And it's tougher every year. He's had crabgrass for two years. Crabgrass. He's a wonderful player. Six out of seven free throws tonight, 22 points. He's played very well. His last six games, he's averaged 22 points a game. Well above his average of 19. I think this guy's going to be a really good NBA player. I think so, too. Good two-guard, small guard. They play almost. They can play three positions. Really. And he plays very, very hard. And bound to Liberty. It's a two-on-one situation. Look at Garner get back in a hurry. Liberty buries the jumper. That's why it's hard to press Illinois. They beat that press with a long pass. Then you got two-on-one, three-on-two, and they're so athletic they're going to find a way to get the ball in the basket. 84-58. The seniors are going out in style. Bullard. 
Look at the field goal percentage in the second half. Illinois shooting 72%. Not all of those have been layups. Garner in maybe where he shouldn't have been. Here comes Liberty. Battle. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And a blocking foul called against Battle as he tried to draw the charge. What a run by Kenny Battle. Marcus Liberty with the ball. I'll just let you watch it. This defies description. Oh, my. I love it. Oh, he yeah. Battle only has a dozen. He should get four for that one. And he gets a great hand as he comes out with 10.52 to go. The lead has grown to 28 points. You think he got over the bench and Lou Henson said, now why did you commit that foul? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Coaches are never satisfied. Small comes out of the ball game. Hamilton returns. Garner trying to get his name in the scorebook. Mr. Badley and Pardo with the rebound. Well, everything going badly now. Going sour for the Hawkeyes. Hamilton, he likes that spot. Missed that one. Horton. Oh, good play by Horton. Good nice speed good. to Marble. How about the ball handling? One end to the other end. Beating the press, they get a four on three. Anderson! No basket offensive foul. The crowd doesn't like that one. Now you can almost see that one coming. Nick Anderson said, Battle, you think you can do it? I can do it. That's right. Nick Anderson right down the middle, trying to give a Kenny Battle dunk here, and he got up in the air, I can tell you that. Looked like a good call, too. Contact to Kirk before he let it go. Yeah. It was a good call. Armstrong, he's fouled before. He got to the baseline. Hamilton will pick up the personal. Boy, the Illinois fans are a little greedy. They're up by 26 with 10-19 to go, and they're protesting every call that goes Iowa's way. Well, you know, Iowa's had a lot of success against this club. Yes, they have. They've won six of their last yeah. seven, and two of the last three they played here in Champaign, so it hasn't been very pleasant for the fighting Illini playing the Hawkeyes the last couple of years. That's right. They may want to win this one by 45 just for past troubles. Armstrong hits the first and get another. It's good to see P.J. back playing again. He had that hamstring problem and he's got uh, a little wrap on that left leg to help. 86-61 with 10-19 to go in the game. Full court pressure. They've got to go for the turnovers. Beat the 10 seconds. Bardo to Gill. Look at Hamilton. And Hamilton is fine. But then, even when they miss their shots, they've got guys in position to get the offensive rebound for the stick backs. They sure do. Our presentation of Championship Week will continue tomorrow. Championship games at 5 o'clock, the Transamerica Athletic Conference. Then at 7.30, the Ohio Valley Conference Championship. And at 9.30 p.m., the Atlantic 10. Penn State was some surprises in there, huh? Everybody thought it would be Temple, West Virginia? No, no. So did Temple and West Virginia. Rutgers, Penn State, and Rutgers. It's an unusual setup. They play at the... Uh, home of the highest seeded team. Played the other games at the Molester and decided to move the championship game to the highest seeded team. Bardo for three, why not? 89-62. Thompson, nice dish to Horton. And he traveled. You know, Mike, as Tom Davis, a coach who is sitting there having to go through this, having to endure this, there is so little you can do. I mean, you're doing everything you can possibly do, but the way Illinois is playing is just one of those nights. Exactly. One of the rare shots in the second half that spun out for the Illini. Moses for three. Part over the rebound. It's a five on two. Liberty. Now here is the kid like most Proposition 48 
players who struggled when he finally got to play, but he doesn't look like he's struggling anymore. There's a block by Gill. Marble forces it up and got it. What a shot. Tough. Two guys on him, front and back. Marble has 27. Well, we've seen some plays tonight. Tell you what, you're going to see about half these guys in the NBA. Gill! That's another three, and it's 94-64. Marble. And he quiets the crowd with another runner. He has 29. Gill again, alley -oop. Nice play by Bullard to pick it off. Well, that was a good defensive play by Bullard. Armstrong right back. Great speed. He blew by Bardo, made the bucket, and picked up the foul. And he protected the ball with his body, shielded the ball, got it up, and kissed it on the glass. Excellent offensive play. The seniors on these ball clubs have gone at each other for four years. And tonight, it's Illinois' turn of 94-68. If you just joined us, Illinois has put on a, simply an awesome display, 94-68 over Iowa. And that means they will be one and a half games behind Indiana in the Big Ten championship race. The Hoosiers have at least a share of the title already clinched. Illinois will have to go to Michigan Saturday. Indiana can win the title outright by beating Wisconsin tomorrow night. They will be favored to do so or winning at Iowa on Saturday. Of course, Bob Knight doesn't want it to come down to that. He'd like to wrap it up tomorrow night against Wisconsin. I want to go back to the point that I made at the top of the show, and I really want to reinforce this. I think that if Illinois beats Michigan on Saturday, they are entitled to a number one seed. Not to knock Indiana out, maybe it will, but they've beaten the Hoosiers twice, and Illinois playing as well as anybody in the country right now. And they've got Gill back healthy and ready to play. I don't know how you can deny them a number one seed the way they're playing. It would be tough to do. 94-68 approaching the eight-minute mark in the game. Bowman is into the ball game number 10 for the first time for Illinois. He's got the ball and lost it out of bounds. P.J., a junior out of Champaign. Junior college transfer. He has struggled with his shooting. Did you know he had 18 against Iowa at Iowa? It was a season high for him. He's got the talent. First team national junior college All-American. Tip won't go. Here comes the break. Bowman with the wall. Went to the middle. Dishes to battle. One of those players who just seems to pop up wherever the ball is. I mean, right there, he misses the shot. He gets back immediately on defense and almost deals the ball. They have not done too much wrong tonight. I think that's about 33 minutes of the finest basketball I've seen a team play this year. Kendall Gill with the steal, and then he commits the violation on the sideline. And Mike, you got to talk about this. They're not playing a bad club. This is no. a good basketball team that they're playing in Iowa. A club that has won 21 games and beaten some good teams this year. In fact, beat North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This is a good club. They've beaten Illinois once. So this is a club that you're going to look at. You're going to see this team in the NCAA tournament. They're going to perform well tonight. This has been all over. I think the presence of Kendall Gill really made a difference. Thompson with a miss. Here comes Bowman on the run. He's got Gill on his left. Holds up. Lou Henson up telling his team he wants him to run the offense. AC, Hamilton had it slapped away on the way up. Bowman got it back. It's funny to see this kind of pace right now, the way they've been playing. Gill just off the mark. Thompson clears. Yeah, it does. Garner got caught up in the air, kicks it back out. Marble for three. Boy, Marble with 32 points. Terrific night. Terrific night. Turnover right there. Liberty threw it right into the hands of Thompson. And Thompson gets the bucket. Marble has matched his career high. And Iowa has cut the lead to 21 points. We've got a timeout. 6.41 to go in the game. It's still all Illinois. 6.41 left in this one, a 21-point lead for Illinois. The Illini with the ball. This is Marcus Liberty. The runner won't go for him. Thompson out on the run for Iowa, head to Marble. Look at that control. Look at that move. Roy Marble.
a career high 34 points. His team is still down by 19. Trying to get the turnover. Illinois beats the 10 second clock again. Now Kendall Gill will bring it back out. Mike, I noticed a couple of things about this Illinois team and both the timeouts coming out of the timeout, they kind of got out of sync. They lost their adrenaline and they kind of calmed down a little bit. It's like they wanted to run some time off the clock and they don't look real good doing that. Yeah, they like, I think they're gonna be more comfortable in the tournament playing that up-tempo, that press, and, and take the shot when it's there and come right back and try to get them. You know, when you got these kind of athletes, you gotta turn them loose. Don't put them in a cage. Get them out there and let them run free. Battle gets the loose ball, follows with the left hand, the ball goes, and the foul on Jepson. The officials now conferring about the basket. I think they're saying it was touched by another Illinois player, so the tip won't count. And you know what, Mike? Like it may have been. They're right. Battle's going to go to the line and shoot the free throws. I think uh, Hamilton might have touched that ball as it started down. I think if he left it alone, he might have gotten in. Another good piece of teamwork by the officials. <laughs> Offensive rebound and a whistle. Lane violation. Uh, excuse me, it's a two-shot foul, so you can't win, but everybody did. Now watch Battle come down inside. Now watch Hamilton touch this ball as it comes down. Yeah. No reason. You yeah. gotta leave it alone. On its way down. Kenny Battle's gonna have a conversation with Mr. Hamilton and say, leave my shots alone. <laughs> Battle's missed his only free throw. Makes that one. 95-75, six minutes left. Marble, big oh, go. Oh, is he hot? Marble has 37. What a show he's put on. Smith lost it. Here comes Horton the other way. I think Horton wants to shoot. Got it to Marble. Why not? Jepson offensive rebound. Well, Iowa's not quitting. They closed it to 15 points. And we've got a foul on the inbounds play. I think Jepson fouled Larry Smith. He's trying to get down there to try to get the interception. Now watch the ball go through. Now watch Smith, Jepson, turn and crack it. Now watch him. There he's pushing him out of the way. I don't know about that call. Oh, that was. Well, I think what they're trying to do, and, and we've commented on this a couple of times, is make sure it doesn't get out of hand because it had that look to it a couple of times. What a comeback by Iowa. They have cut it to 15. Still a long way to go. But they've certainly gotten their interest back in this. Well, they've made it respectable. I mean, at one point, it was yeah, a 30-point game. Exactly. It's just some indication of the type of club that Tom Davis has got. This, this Iowa team can come back on you pretty quickly. They can score a lot of points. They did early on in the first half. Horton with another rebound. He's been tough on the boards. Armstrong back in the ballgame. Starting to get into it a little bit. They want to see Illinois get to 100. They've been stuck on 96 for a while. And a travel on Horton. Horton has struggled. He's had a couple of traveling violations, missed some shots, forced some other things. Almost a five-second violation. Trying to get the ball inbounds. Iowa's done a much better job with their press in the second half. They've been able to get some turnovers and get some points off of those turnovers. Cardo gets it to battle. Illinois trying to work some time off the clock. And here's where their offense has gone bad. They haven't done well in this situation. They like that transition. They want to push the ball up and down the floor. They're much better in the transition than they are the half-court game, I think, Mike. When they go to the half-court game, they're really better trying to go inside. Gill on Armstrong. He probably won't give him any room for the three point. Moses will take a three. Nice offensive rebound inside. And Horton does take up some room. Horton put up the little jump hook. They cut the lead back to 16. Gill with a 15 footer. Kendall Gill has made some show tonight. He's had 15 points, most of them in the first half when they really counted. Moses for three again. Horton got uh, Lowell Hamilton that time on a push-off on the outside. 
100 to 82 with 418 left. Mike, here's the game they like to play, the transition game. They want to get the ball in the hands of that guy, Kendall Gill, and he can do that or he can dish either one. You got to like this team for the way they play up and down the court. You know, if I'm an opposing coach and I'm looking at this team, I got to worry about that. I got to have good ball handlers, shooters, rebounders, defenders. They have everything to play these guys. Exactly. <laughs> Hamilton hits the free throw. Give him 18 points on the night, five rebounds, four out of five from the line, and it's 101 82. Everybody will pick up a paper in the morning and say, oops, Kendall Gill's back. I think they already know it, particularly the coaches of the Big Ten. Hamilton missed the second, and Bullard with the rebound. I guarantee you Bill Frieder knows it. I'll bet he does. Armstrong for three. Well, Iowa got close at 15, but they've missed three straight three-point shots. And Illinois in control as we hit four minutes. Hamilton, oh! He left Horton nailed to the floor. He has 20. Three-pointer by Marble won't go. And the ball over the top of the basket support and out of bounds to Illinois. Mike, it's a great way to go out as a senior. Watch Lowell Hamilton right in the corner. Horton comes after him, forget it. He jammed it. 103-82. Lou Henson says take a little time off the clock. Yeah, forget it. Let's lay it in. Unless you get a layup. Hamilton has 22. Anderson has 29. B.J. Armstrong off the glass. Oh, that's an NBA move right there. That's an Isaiah Thomas move. Take it in there and lay it high off the glass. 105-84. Gill stripped from behind by Marble, who has played a tremendous game. Armstrong to Horton. And Horton hangs on the basket. The crowd wanted a technical and certainly could have gotten one. You can't hang. Getting a little bit sloppy. I will tell you one thing, Illinois has hung Iowa tonight. Yeah, they have. Illinois is just going to take care of the ball now. I don't think they're even going to try to attempt a shot until he gets down to that zero mark. Look at Marble on Gill. He is playing so hard. Battle. He's fouled by Bull. Mike, let me ask you a question. How many teams out of the Big Ten in the NCAA? I don't think Ohio State will get there now. I think Wisconsin has a shot. They've got a shot. I agree with that. And I feel sorry for Gary Williams and Ohio State, too. And here's the, the top five right here. And Wisconsin's got that big game against Indiana tomorrow night. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that might be their bubble game. Well, I hope for the sake of their program that they do get in. I think in 1947, the last time they went to the NCAA, it would be great for them in the fine year that they've had. By the next exhibition, they will win their 26th game. That ties the record, not the most wins they've had in a season. They won 26 one time before. Battle oh hits the first. 106, 86. It back to Gill for three. Oh, Looking Bill gets it out to Garner. Garner all the way. It'll be a blocking foul. That's a good call. The crowd doesn't like it. But you can see the defender move. Ryan Garner made an excellent offensive move. Lou Henson. Lou, you're up 20, pal. Yes, it out and enjoy. Watch Garner with the ball. Now watch Gill get over in front of him. Yeah, he's moving that body. That's a good call. Official made the right call. Garner is going to go to the line and shoot. It's so tough. You have to watch the defender, whether he is moving when the player leaves the floor. I think one of the most positive things they've done in basketball in recent years is put three officials on the floor. I do, too. I think it has really helped because the athletes were getting so quick and so big, you needed to have that extra set of eyes. 
The hand is for Kendall Gill, who leaves with 15 points in his return to Assembly Hall. Garner misses both free throws, gets the loose ball back, however. Oh, what a pass to Thompson. That was impossible. Somehow it got through. Liberty knocks it outside. Smith comes out with it. Smith needed to get rid of it. They had a four on one. And Hamilton hits the jumper anyway. 108-86. Horton back the other way with another spin move. He'll show some range. Oh, yes. Oh, gee. A little finesse move there. Ed Horton has 19. Liberty. Dribble out of trouble. And Hamilton sees all. He missed it. Somehow he missed it. And here's the foul against Larry Smith. 141 to go in the game. Illinois with a tremendous display, leading by 20, 108, 88. Mike Patrick and Larry Conley with you. Sports Center immediately follows our telecast. Bob Lee, Chris Berman, and his mustache. All three will be there to bring you everything going on in sports. Mustache and something, I think. Do we have a uh, one of those call-in numbers, you know, yes a mustache or no a mustache, 50 cents a call? Would people actually pay 50 cents to evaluate that mustache? I would. <laughs> I'd call in. Thompson hits a free throw. Bardo comes out, gets a nice hand. Hey, you got to wonder what this is going to do to Iowa. This would give them their third loss in a row, which is the first time to Tom Davis's club that Iowa have ever lost three in a row. And they've got a tough game against Indiana coming up. Yeah. 108 90. Battle. Oh! Oh! Oh, it's going to call an intentional foul. They're going to count the goal. This could be six. Holy cow. Horton put a shoulder into him, the likes of which you will not see very often. I mean, that was a shoulder. Watch him make the move. Bam. Ooh. And he threw it up. Boy, the official did not hesitate. He went immediately to the block and then the crossed arms to indicate the intentional foul. Well, I think it was a good call, but I don't know how you can give him the basket. No, I don't either. I mean, the foul occurred, and then he took one step yeah. and then let it go. In the NBA, you give it to them. Down here, you don't. Battle one out of two. They'll get the ball back, leading 111 to 90. Horton went by and tapped Battle and said he was sorry. No, he told him to come back here again, you'll get it again. <laughs> you got to apologize after that. What a shoulder. And he didn't move an inch. Jump hook by Battle. In your face. 113 to 90. He couldn't make that one. Horton got the follow, and he's fouled by him. Really good move by Hamilton to get over there even and attempt to block the shot. You know what? Battle just racked up five points on that trip. Yeah. 113 to 90. Of all the great performances tonight, Roy Marble stands out. He's got 37. This could be Iowa's worst loss of the season. They were beaten in Michigan 119 to 96. They're down 22 right now. Horton trying to get 20 points and does. He also has 10 rebounds. Most of those, however, were after the foul. Battle just brings the ball up himself. He didn't depend on the guard. He didn't have to give it to Liberty. Didn't have Smith. The Bowman out there. Almost lost. Brown wants Hamilton for three. And it goes over the backboard. Brown started to coach a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and Lowell took their advice and jacked up his first three-pointer of the season. Bowman may have gotten his first rebound. <laughs> Ahead to Smith. Allie It is showtime. Gardner, oh, what a pass. pass to Thompson. What a terrific pass. Oh. Boy, are we seeing some plays tonight? And here's a foul on the inbounds play as Smith was at. 
Well, I'll tell you what, Garner's going to step right into the shoes of B.J. Armstrong, and they won't miss a beat. Some pass. Well, maybe they'll miss a little yeah. bit. And now here comes the exit of the seniors. Kenny Battle. Lowell Hamilton. Battle leaves with 19, Hamilton with 24. with 29. Excuse me, battle with 21. Thirty-five seconds left. Illinois' record will go to 26 and 4. Of course, the Iowa seniors will get their curtain call. Thompson for the offensive rebound, but it's Liberty instead. What ball control. Guy 6'8. Good pass. And there's the foul on Jepson. You know, Mike, that gives you an indication of what Marcus Liberty is like. He could have taken a very poor shot. His club is up 115 to 94. The discipline is still there. Exactly. He gave up the good shot and dished it to the left. Smith's going to walk to the line and shoot two. Lou Henson clearing his bench, 21 seconds to go. Mike McDonald is in there. Here comes Horton. Pulls off. Swat by Liberty. Boy, it looked like a goaltend, and they didn't call that one. Bowman for three. score, Illinois 118, Iowa 94 for Larry Conley and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching.